This screencast works out the problems from the released 2014 math multiple choice questions from the New York State test. Uh, this is the first half of this. I have a part two which will include the second half. The, this is accompanied by a PDF that you can download and an interactive quiz that you can take on my website, homeworkhelp5.com. I'll provide the URL for these resources uh, in the comments or the uh, description accompanying this video. All right, let's go over this problem. It's not extremely hard, but reading carefully is very important. Which statement is true about the values of the two expressions below? We have expression A, 3 times the sum of 8 plus 4, and expression B is simply 8 plus 4. Well, let's, let's solve these. So expression A is 3 times the sum of 8 plus 4. We'll simplify the expression in the parentheses. The, the part in the parentheses must be solved first. So 3 times 8 plus 4 is 12. And the answer is 36. And of course, 8 plus 4 is simply 12. So let's look at our choices here. We have the value of B is 8 times the value of expression A. The value of expression A is 3 times the value of expression B. C, the value of A is 3 more than the value of expression B. And the value of expression B is 3 more than the value of expression A. Well, these can easily be uh, checked since we've evaluated these. So let's go through them and uh, talk about which one's right and why the ones that are wrong are wrong. Okay, let's look at A. We have the value of expression B, that's 12, is 3 times the value of expression A. Well... B is not 3 times 36. 3 times 36 would be regrouping 108. So that's not true. And notice that I'm not leaving things a chance. I'm actually working things out. The expression A, that's uh, right over here, A, 36, is 3 times the value of expression B. Well, that one's true. Because if I take expression B, and I multiply it times 3, I get 36. So that's the correct answer. But let's also go and discuss the other ones. C. I had a student select this. The value of A is 3 more than the expression of value B. Well, if I take expression B, and I add 3 to that, 12 plus 3 equals 15. That's not true. Expression B is 3 more than the value of expression A. I'll take expression A, add 3, I get 39. That does not equal 12. So that one is wrong as well. Okay, this one's pretty basic. However, uh, a lot of kids uh, do get this wrong. And we just have to pay attention. Let's read. And again, reading and paying attention and working out is critical to your success. Which volume represents the which diagram represents the volume of one cubic unit? The key word here is volume. We talk about volume. Okay, we're talking about length times width times height. And that's three dimensions, right? So if we have units, we have a unit times a unit times a unit in order to do that. And if it's a one cubic unit, well, that'd be one times one times one. Notice that we have three units here, so I also could just express those as one unit times one unit times one unit. Um, if we look at the first two choices, we have uh, area, okay, because we just have unit times unit, and two units times two units. So these two are out because they represent area. Let's look at C. Well, that's not the same as uh, one cubic unit because if I took this, I would take two units times two units times two units 
equals 4 units squared times 2 units equals 8 units cubed. That one can't be correct either because it does not equal 1 cubic unit. And if we look at the last one, we'll see that we end up with something very similar to what we see up here when we discuss this problem in the first place. We have length, or we have length, width, and height, okay? Length, width, and height. Each of those is equal to one unit, one unit times one unit times one unit. And of course, one unit times one unit times one unit is one unit cubed. There's our choice, D. Now this one is simply a definition, and it's something that you should know from the exercises, especially if you're using the math modules. It becomes very clear because we've actually done this. We've uh, started with cubic units, and we'll discuss this uh, in relation to that. Which phrase describes the volume of a three-dimensional figure? Well, again, volume is cubic units. So the first thing we can do is get rid of the choices that have square units. So we'll cross those out. Because remember, we took our rectangular prisms in some cases. We actually filled them with unit cubes. And I kind of gave it away there because it's B. It's the number of cubic units it takes to fill a solid figure. So we can figure it out right by actually filling those. We did that in class in module 5. Um, and then we also related that to length times width times height. And we came up with answers that were nearly the same, although our uh, exercises were not perfect. So again, this is simply a definition. The volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of cubic units it takes to fill a solid figure. Okay, so we have another one here, and let's read it again, reading carefully. Uh, recipe for one batch of muffins included two-thirds of, uh, of a cup of raisins. Ina made two and a half batches of muffins. How many cups of raisins did she use? Well, if each batch uses uh, two-thirds, I mean, we have two-thirds for one batch, and we have two-thirds for the other batch. Then we have one-half of two-thirds. And in a way we are doing a repeated addition problem. We could solve it that way. But when we have a, a repeated addition problem, we multiply. So I have a couple ways to do this. One way to do this is to change my mixed number into an improper fraction, so I'm going to start with that, then we'll do an area model. Two-thirds times two and one-half equals two-thirds times five-halves. We're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominators, and I get ten-sixths, and I can change that to a mixed number because our answers are given as mixed numbers. I'm going to actually do some division. 6 goes into 10 once. I subtract and I get 4. The denominator is the divisor. 1 and 4 6. Now they could have just as easily have expressed the answer in simplified form. 1 and 2 thirds. We need to be prepared to look at the two different possible uh, alternative correct answers. And if we look at our multiple choice here, we see that we have A, 1 and 4, 6. Now, I'm going to do the area model, and here's a suggestion that I'm going to make. If you have time on your test, one easy way to go back and check is to do the same problem a different way. So let's do the area model. I have 2 thirds on the side. I'm going to decompose 2 and a half to 2 plus 1 half. We'll partition our area model. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. And that equals 1 and 1 third. 2 thirds times 1 half is 2 sixths. 
and that equals one third. And now we get the sum one and one third plus one third. We find the sum of that and we get one and two thirds. Now again we notice that we don't have that answer there. So we'll have to look for an equivalent fraction to two thirds. And if we see and look carefully, if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator of two thirds, we would get one and four six and again that affirms our answer here we see a match here and we see a match here okay this is a fairly straightforward problem Manny James and Isidro sh equally share one half of a pie what fraction of the whole pie did each of them receive if I look at Manny James and Isidro I see that there are three people and we have one half of a pie. But what's being split? The people? We're not going to divide people. Not this time. The thing that's actually being split is the pie. So I have one half divided by three. So let's make a tape diagram. I have a hole. And I'm going to take one half of that hole and shade it. Now I'm going to partition that into three equal parts. I'm going to shade one of those three parts. So in this case, we have changed one half. One half becomes, now I didn't finish this, I need to partition this part too, becomes three six. One out of the uh, six is totally shaded. Three out of the six are sh partially shaded and equivalent to one half. So three six. One half becomes three six divided by three. Three six divided by three is one six. We have the tape diagram and we have the math. And again, one of the things I remind my kids, just as a check, if you are um, dividing a fraction by a whole number, if you start with a fraction, end with a fraction, this is uh, just a quick and easy way to check your work. And again, we have a one sixth. Okay, Austin collected 30 and 9 tenths kilograms of glass for recycling. Exactly two-thirds of the glass he collected was blue. What is the total amount in kilograms of blue glass Austin collected? All right, well, when we see this two-thirds of, we're, we're thinking of, you know, two-thirds of... 30 and 9 tenths, and in the modules they related that to multiplication. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply 2 thirds times 30 and 9 tenths. Well, again, two approaches. I can change 30 and 9 tenths to a mixed number, or an improper, improper fraction rather. And I can use the area model. I'll do both as usual. And again, if you have time, do both. So I have 2 thirds times 30 and 9 tenths. That equals 2 thirds times, what do I have here? 30 times 10 is 300 plus 9, 309 over 10. Well, I can do some simplifying here. Let's rewrite this. 2 times 309 over 3 times 10. Excuse me. I can find the common factor. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 309 divided by 3 is 103. I can also find a common factor between the 2 and the 5 and the 10. This becomes a 1. And this becomes a 5. So now I have 103 fifths. Well, fractions are division problems, and we should do this out instead of just guessing. So I'm going to now take 103 divided by 5. 5 goes into 10 twice. I subtract. I get a 0. Bring down my 3. 5 does not go into 3. We need to put that 0 in. A common thing for students to do is forget that. And our remainder is 3. 
that becomes our numerator, and our divisor is our denominator. So we have 20 and 3 fifths. Okay, let's do it with the area model. So I have 2 thirds, and I have 30 and 9 tenths. I decompose that. 2 thirds times 30 is 60 thirds. And that equals 60 divided by 3 is 20. And 2 thirds uh, times 9 tenths is 18 thirtieths. And we can simplify that. We'll divide uh, both 18 and 30 by 6. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. And 30 divided by 6 is 5. We find the sum of our two partial products. We get 20 and 2 fifths. Same answer. There's our answer. The other thing we can do, though, is, is really these other choices are really kind of ridiculous. Because if I did an estimate, 30 and 9 tenths is about 30. 2 thirds times 30 equals 20. There's only one answer that's even close. So we've done it two ways. We used estimation to check too, and if you use that kind of care when you take a state test, you're going to do much better and make much fewer silly mistakes. What number goes in the blank to make the statement below true? 3,840 ounces equals blank pounds. We should know that ounces are smaller than pounds. We know that. 16 ounces equals one pound. We need to know that because the reference sheet for ounces and pounds uh, no longer includes ounces and pounds. You are expected to know that, at least in New York State. We could also say that one ounce equals one sixteenth of a pound. There's a few ways we can do this. A lot of people just uh, say, well, I, I can divide that. And I'm also, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to go through the more formal procedure used in the modules. So I have 3,840. And I'm going to have fewer pounds and ounces because ounces are smaller than pounds. So divide it by 16. I get a 2. 32. I subtract. I get a 64. Six, uh, 16 goes into 64 four times. Now sometimes kids forget to do this last step here, but that's why I want you to carefully align the digits in your dividend and quotient. And that'll remind you that we have one more step to go here. So I subtract. I bring down the zero. 20, uh, uh, 16 goes into zero, zero times. And they get a zero. So the answer is 240. Again, some kids, if they're careless, are going to pick that 24. Now, uh, let's go and do the more formal procedure. We have 3,840 times 1 ounce equals 3,840 times 1 16th of a pound. And that equals 3,840 divided by 16. Well, we did that work out previously here. We know that it's 240. Let's look at some of the other choices here. I'm not sure where they come up with C, but in terms of D, instead of dividing, they likely multiplied. But we have to know that there are the pounds are greater than ounces, and each ounce is a fraction of a pound, or 16 ounces equals one pound. So that one's not correct, by the way. So 240 is your answer. Okay, we have another one. What is the area? Ooh, area. I'm going to stop right now and say area equals length times width. Okay. In square inches of a rectangle with the dimensions shown in the diagram before. All we have to do is uh, plug our numbers into that diagram. So what is my length? Area equals 7 eighths is my length. 
my width is 3 sixteenths. We're going to now multiply both the numerators and both the denominators. And what do we get? I get 21. And 8 times 16. Well, that's the same as 8 times 8. I'm going to decompose 16 into 8 times 2. So now I have 8 times 8 times 2, and that's 64 times 2 equals 128. And we have 128. So it's tw 21, 128. So I hope this little decomposition thing doesn't confuse you. Of course, you can simply multiply 16 times 8 and get a 48, and that's 128. Either case, there's our answer. What is the value of the expression below? Okay, very simple. We just need to do some dividing here. We'll, uh, of course, set up the tableau. 24 is my divisor. 1,536 is my dividend. The dividend goes under the tableau. 24 is really easy to work with because it's close to 25. And I'm now going to look at how many times does 25 go into 15? It doesn't. What about 150? Well, I know that 6 quarters is $1.50, so I'm going to go with 6. So I'm going to multiply 24 times 6, get a 4, regroup the 2, and that's uh, 144. Looks reasonable. We'll subtract. 13 minus 4 is 9, and we'll bring down that 6. Well, we need to record our quotient. Notice that I put that right over the 3. And how many uh, how many 24s in 96? Well, 96 is close to 100. And 4 quarters makes a uh, dollar for 100 cents. So we're going to try that 4. And I'll have 24 times 4 equals 96. And we have the answer. It's B. How many cu uh, how is the volume and what is the volume in cubic centimeters of the figure below? Now there's two definitions. There's the number of unit cubes here, but this is a little bit hard because we have hidden unit cubes. Uh, I, I can approach this any number of ways, and, and I will. The first way I want to talk about since it's volume is volume equals length times width times height. And the easiest way to do this is don't start counting these cubes. We just want to find the length. So we'll label the length. We can do that by counting the cubes. So I have five centimeters. And here I have three centimeters. And the height is three centimeters. So now I simply Plug in my values, 5 times 3 times 3 equals 15 times 3 equals 45. Now there's other ways we could look at that. We could slice this, we could slice it front to back. And in the front we have 15, 3 by 5. We have three layers of 15. Okay, we could also slice it other ways. We could talk about slicing it this way. We have nine in each slice and five slices, again, 45. And we could slice it top to bottom and slice it like cakes. And each layer has 15. Three layers of 15 is 45 once again. That might have been superfluous, but here we go. The answer is 45. Okay, the last one is a Millie designed a rectangular label to put on the front of her scrapbook. The label is 5 tenths foot wide five and 5 six foot long. What is the area? Again, we found that keyword area in square feet of the label. Whenever I see the word area or volume, I immediately plug in, uh, write that standard formula, and... It's easy because then we can plug in the values. So what do we have? Area. Let's see, the length is 5 6 and the width is 5 twelfths. 
5 times 5 over 6 times 12. There's no common factors there. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 12 is 72. 25, 70 seconds. There we go. D.